Okay, so the Immigration Act 2014-2016, I hope you're all au okay fait with this because this has been law in um, the UK since the 1st of February 2016. We originally trialled it in our area, the West Midlands, on in December 2014, and it came in across the country on the 1st of Feb 2016. The Immigration Act states that you must be able to verify the right to rent, the right to reside in the UK for every single occupier that is in your property. Now, bear in mind I said occupier, not tenant. Not your named tenants, everybody that's living there. So what that means is you need to be doing regular inspections of your property and documenting who is living there, who was there at the time of the inspection, and all of these things need to be documented and recorded because otherwise you may be non-compliant. Now, there was a sneaky little change that came in on the 20th of May 2019 that I didn't know about. So from the 20th of May 2019, tenants coming from the below countries do no longer need a visa. They're called something like BK55SLK uh, countries. And David Cox, the, the CEO of Arla, said, have you heard of them? I said, no, it sounds like a car registration, <laughs> not a country. But these uh, countries here, Australia, Japan, USA, Canada, New Zealand and Singapore, no longer need a, uh, a visa to enter into our country. They can come in free will for up to six months. So if you get a tenant that applies to rent a property from you and they are from one of these countries and they came into the country after the 20th of May 2019, they will not be able to produce a visa for you to verify their right to rent. So for us, oh, we've got a late comer. That means you've got to come up here and do a dance. I'm only joking. Come on in. Um, Okay, so it doesn't mean that because these people are free to enter the country for up to six months that we don't have to still carry out the right to rent checks. We do. But now what we need is two documents to verify these people's ID. So we need a valid passport, nice and easy, because they've just come into the country. I'm hoping they've got a passport. But then the other thing that you need is a... Um, <laughs> you need evidence of the date of entry to the UK. So at the Arla conference, David Cox said, so... Um, we're recommending a boarding pass. How many people keep their boarding pass from the 20th of May 2019? Come on. Um, this could prove tricky because we are going to have to facilitate some sort of evidence of entry into the UK after that date. Because prior to that date, they needed a visa. After this date, they didn't. And you only have to carry your follow-up check. Um, if they, so when you do the check, every time you do a check, whether it's on these countries or whether it's on any um, tenant whatsoever, a follow-up check is not required until 12 months after the initial check. So if I move a tenant into a property today and their visa expires tomorrow, as long as I move them in today and their visa was in date at the start of tenancy, I don't need to check them again for 12 months. I don't need to check them tomorrow, okay? And I strongly recommend you don't check them sooner than you need to because we did that once because my staff were being so efficient. They noticed that the visa had expired and it turned out she didn't have a right to rent and we shouldn't have even done the check. So only do your checks at the correct time, okay? Which is 12 months after the initial. Quite straightforward, the Immigration Act, you would think, if they had made it just on tenants. The real, real challenge here is occupiers. Landlords that are self-managing, you need to do regular checks. Again, yesterday I was talking to agents and most let-only landlords will say, well, we don't do formal inspections because we go, we pop round, we have a look at the, we have a cup of tea with a tenant or we do whatever, or I was there yesterday. But it's got to be documented so that if ever there is a claim against you, you're able to say, on every occasion when we visited this property, the right tenants were in there. I had another landlord that chose to have his dad carry out the inspections rather than uh, pay the agent to do so. Now, his dad was inspecting the property for three and a half years, but unfortunately, the person that he was meeting wasn't the tenant for the whole three and a half years. But how does the landlord's dad know who the tenant is? We let the property, we did the identification, we met him at the viewing, we moved him in, we gave him the keys. The landlord had never even met the tenant because he was down south. You can't put this kind of responsibility onto, you know, your dad round the corner because actually he was non-compliant with the law for the whole time. This was a Nigerian tenant, Nigerian occupier who required a visa. 
Penalties, again, it's a criminal offence. There's banning orders. Um, you know, they are absolutely rife at the moment. Any questions on the Immigration Act before I move on? Yeah, on, on an AS2. Yes. Like you're obliged to give them 24 hours notice. You access. are. So those people aren't going to be there anyway, are they? Of course, no. Um, and... It's all about, everything that I'm talking to you about today is about due diligence. And the, the government accept this, that the only thing you can do from a landlord's perspective is carry out regular inspections in line with the law. And that's by giving them prior notice that you're attending. I put that on your site this week and said, what is a regular visit? Who okay. People are saying six months or when I go with the electric man or mm -hmm. what are you saying? Okay, so I would normally say absolutely no more than every quarter because that would be deemed borderline on their quiet enjoyment. So I would only say no more than every quarter, every three months. Um, but it depends how long your tenant's been there as well. I think when you first rent out a property, if you rent it on a six-month tenancy, I would do an inspection at three months. Because if there was anything untoward going on, at that point is where I'd look at considering serving notice to end at the end of tenancy. On a 12-month tenancy, I would probably say six months in. Or you could do one at three months or you could do one at nine months. It really does depend, but you need to be doing at least two annually just to make sure that the people in there are who they say they are. Other things to consider about this as well is when you rent to a, uh, a tenant, mature tenants that have got um, children that are under the age of 18, at that point in time, you don't need to verify their right to reside, but as soon as they become 18, you will. You need their documentation, you need their passport, you need their evidence that they too have the right to reside because they are living in the property. Does that make sense? I am sorry to be the bearer of bad news because everybody just looks at me as if to say the government's crazy, I agree. Yes, madam. Not that you would, but we all do. Come on, it's not rocket science. Okay, so what we do as, your, as an agent, what we do for our landlords as an agent, if we go to a property and we know that somebody's not there, we will write to them and we will say, upon our uh, most recent inspection, it was noted that your mum and dad was there or your partner was there. Um, can you please confirm whether the partner resides within the property? And if he does... We're not permitting it, but we're asking you to provide us um, evidence of his right to reside under the Immigration Act 2014-2016. You quote the legal act at them, and then you just do a follow-up. So you, you can allow them to live there, but what you've got to remember is a tenant is a tenant, so they have the rights to live there. You can also have somebody called a permitted occupier, which is somebody that lives there that's not a tenant, so they're not responsible for the rent, but you are allowing them to live there. Or you can have a tenant with somebody that you're not allowing to live there, but you are allowing to live there unofficially. But regardless of whether you are allowing them to live there or not, you still need to satisfy the right to rent requirements. Does that make sense? Yeah? yeah? Yes, sir. <coughs> It could possibly affect your landlord's insurance and it could affect many other things as well. But what you've got to remember is one of the things that you as landlords have to do is allow tenants quiet enjoyment. You as landlords, there's some water here if you want some, I'm just on the desk. No, you're all right, but if you need some. Um, you as landlords are so restricted to what you can do. You can't just go to the property. You can't just turn up. You can't do this. You can't do that. So there has to be some leeway. You're not all... You live with them 24 7 to make sure that they're not move their boyfriend in you just can't do it what if they say you're just visiting you do the follow-up check again and then if that and again you've just got, you've got to remember that immigration act it's only illegal to rent to, to an illegal immigrant it's not illegal to carry out a right to rent check it's not illegal to not carry out a right to rent check um but how will you know if they are an illegal if you haven't carried out a right to rent check? Um, we've had situations where we've been out to properties um, and it was an Asian family and their family are over visiting. And because it's such a long way, they're staying for like eight to 12 weeks. 
But they're honest, they're upfront. We ask them what's their date of entry, what's their date of um, vacating. They are permitted to come and visit you, absolutely, but we need to know how long they're going to be there for and you need to clarify to us and confirm to us in writing they have gone home in line with their visa. You know, just think, it's just due diligence. Just make sure you're being as diligent as you possibly can. This, this piece of um, legislation was aimed, I feel, more at London, and the HMO market, where there's a lot of modern day slavery going on, and there's a lot of um, poor standard of living, and there's a lot of immigrants living in really terrible conditions, um, and landlords benefiting from that, because they're willing to accept anything because they know they shouldn't be here. Yes? I have heard that there are legal challenges to it, on the grounds of discrimination, whether there's... Human rights. Yeah, um, they, there was a, a challenge against the right to rent and I was hoping it would come in, but um, as of the last week, 20th of November, when I was at the ARLA conference, they said, no, it still stands, it's not been... Uh, they were saying it was unfair under human rights. It still stands, and even with Brexit at the moment, we just keep doing what we're doing. Um, there's no change until we hear otherwise.